all, guess is how long we take in the US to make a first impression. Just shout it out. What do you think? What a cynical group. <laughs> Not cynical enough. Two to four seconds now, it's going down. And your peripheral vision has gone down because you're staring more at the screen. And more of us in repose are looking pissed. <laughs> this is good news, knowing that if you have a warm expression on your face, it's vastly helpful, not just when you put it on. So when I came home, I asked my godson, I said, I've been reading this research, and I want to ask you, what's the face I have in repose? And he says, we call you radar eyes, you lock in. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> so self-reflection is important. When I went to college, it was like a whole new world. I'd sit in a class of 500. I was blissed to be around all these brilliant teachers. And later on, when I was brought back to be on a committee at the college, I was so honored. But during the cocktail hour, the professor came up and he said, you know, when we first saw you, and several of us did, come over here, John, come here. He said, you know, our first thinking was, look at that person. I wonder if she's on quaaludes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I thought, well, maybe you're trying to hit on us, and it's bizarre. And finally, we realized you actually may be interested in learning. <laughs> so it's not your intent, it's your effect. And the muscles in your face, you can gradually change over time to look genial and repose. Could you hold up your fingers like this? Put them on top of your cheek and do small round circles like this down the front and then along the jawline, right under the ear, it feels really good. <laughs> now, if you do that twice, you actually loosen up and look more attractive. Richie Davidson four different studies, found it made a huge difference. We project onto you that you're more caring, empathic, better looking, and smarter. That's a lot out of just changing how you look in repose. Now, I'm also going to suggest, in an increasingly complex, connected world, bad and good happens from more places faster. And the people that are going to do well are connective leaders. They're the ones who say, I see a mutual interest here. They talk sooner to the sweet spot of mutual interest. They're vividly specific. Now, most of us are smart in the room. That's unfortunate. And we care deeply about our work. That's unfortunate for one reason. The more we know about something, the more we tend to talk in generalities. The specific proves the general. The general makes people go to sleep. And yet, that's what we tend to do. So, for example, I want you just to think about what matters most to you in your life and think, what's the specific detail that proves a general conclusion? It'll take a partner and several layers to go through it. I'll get back to that later. Now, could you look down at the floor? Now, listen to the sounds, ambient sound. Now, notice the bright lights. Now, the pattern in the floor breaks up our attention span. The fact that you sit in straight rows means you'll like me less than if it was chevron or half curve. You sit at a table, if it's oval or round, it's better than rectangular or square. Even that light ambient noise in a well-constructed hotel is a slight agitation. So I'm just going to give you a few of these as we go along. I profoundly believe that there's three things you need in today's world. You need, number one, to identify specifically what your core talent is very specifically, and the flip side, your hot buttons or your blind spots. Three behaviors. It's very hard because we make generalizations. Oh, they're aggressive, or they're rude, or they don't listen. But when we get specific about the actual behavior, it's like defensive driving. We can see ahead of time when it's coming, and we can make choices how we're going to act. When I saw the research about how much we react against, so you hold up your hands, put in the back of your head, triune part of the brain, that's where the primitive part is, it basically means that affects you more than this, the prefrontal cortex, ostensibly executive thinking. Something happens, unless you've had a frontal, frontal lobotomy, <laughs> you'll respond sooner, longer, and more intensely to what you don't like than what you do. So there's a good chance by now I've irritated you in some way, or you found me less than authentic, or whatever the value system is. So if we were doing back to data, as Helen would say, there are five things I was doing that was sort of good, and then one thing you didn't like, and this is the graph. This is what sticks in your mind. That's why there's three important parts in an interaction. The first reaction, 
the high, climatic high point, but most importantly, the peak end, as it's called, peak end in psychology. That means that disproportionately, you go on a five-day vacation. The first part, the hotel wasn't working very well. A couple other things happened. But the last day, you and the kids and the family or whoever you're with, you had a great time at the beach. Overall, that colors your impression. Think about the implications for sales, for service, for helpfulness. As you go out the door of a hotel, it's that last in that disproportionately matters the most.